<sighs> Welcome back. Uh, I thought I'd have a quick catch up with where I am with the power drawbar for Sally the Sile over here. Right, so um, what do you need for a power drawbar? Well, you need a bit of information. So um, uh, here's just a, a few notes for myself so I can talk you through. But uh, to start with, you need to know how much movement you're gonna need from your drawbar in order to release the tool. We'll go and measure that in a moment. Uh, now, I'm basing my whole uh, uh, tool changing system on the Tormac Tools uh, power drawbar. Basically, that's not a bit of kit that's available that I know of here in the UK. Uh, even if it was, it wouldn't fit my um, Chinese mill. So uh, I'm in a bit of a cleft stick, so I've been designing my own. Um, the other thing is, it's bloody expensive. So uh, I think it's about $1,300. I'm trying to make a power drawbar for around $100 pounds. So that's my, my goal. It's tough, and you'll see, I'll talk you through a few of my experiments so far. But um, if you do digging around on Tinternet, you will find the, um, the diameter of, a, uh, of the Tormac cylinder. Um, and there's three of them stacked on top of each other. You know that the pressure from your compressor is 90 PSI. Once you've put those two bits uh, uh, of info together and worked out what the actual capable force of the power drawbar is, you end up with a figure of about 1.5 metric tons, 1500 kilos. I may have gone wrong, but that's more or less where I think we are. Um, now from that you can calculate the number of Belleville springs you're going to need. Again, the, the Tormac system runs on, I think is, it's eight, but I think anywhere between five and 10 will do the job, but you've got to spec the right ones. So um, my particular ones are these, and they are quite beefy buggers, I will admit. They are 20, 29 in diameter with a 12 mil hole going through them, and they are approximately three mil thick. Uh, I can't tell you exactly how, um, what the actual height is of the middle. Uh, I should measure them. What I should do is, is put a link up, uh, when I've finally done this and got this working, uh, put a link up for all the bits. Anyway, um, I've got 10, so uh, putting all that to one side, Let's just pop over to the mill and we'll have a look at how easy it is to release the tool. Put the spanner in. Now it's uh, got a standard drawbar that it was supplied with. And um, if I just lock the quill with this spanner and we, hang on, let's just do it so we can see it, it'd be easier. Right, so we're at a basically 90 degrees. If I just open it, now I've moved all of, what, about 15 degrees, 20 degrees. Let's go a bit further, let's go to about 30 degrees. Tool is released. So that's about 30 degrees of movement. Let's call it 60 degrees, would be on the, on the optimistic side. So 60 degrees of movement on the thread you probably can't see that particularly well, but a 7 16th by 20 UNF thread uh, gives you a pitch in millimetres of 1.27 millimetres. So for every 360 degrees movement, you get 1.27 millimetres of vertical travel. So, da, 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 da. 360 divided by 60 equals uh, 6. So, should know that, shouldn't I? So uh, 1.27 divided by 6 equals, right, there you go, to the difference between locking the tool in and releasing it is 0.212 of a millimetre. That's pretty, pretty damn small. So you don't need 
a huge movement to squash the drawbar down in order to for the tool to pop out. Right, this was my uh, my first attempt. Uh, this um, th this has all been dismantled now because I've moved on. But uh, there's the drawbar. This whole gubbin sits in the top of the mill. This is a linear actuator uh, running on 24 volts, which has a stroke of 50 mil and a force of um, 500 newtons, 50 kilos basically. So uh, this le this lever. Uh, this little uh, barrel here pushes on the uh, on the extension that was running uh, down here to uh, push the drawbar down uh, and that was a 10 to 1 ratio so we've gone from 50 newtons to 500 newton uh, sorry 50 kilos to 500 kilos so 500 kilos of force pushing that down now this worked a treat absolutely superb and for a small mill a little bit smaller than one I've got would work an absolute treat and I would recommend it. It's quite quick, it's really easy to do, you just need a 24 volt power supply and a little switch to turn it into each direction. A little bit of um, electrical work, there's not any electronics in it at all, it's a piece of cake. So uh, however, when I made some quick release tool um, holders for my lathe, I had um, had a problem with, with uh, one of them where the, the tool uh, walked out of the collet. So I thought, ah, I've got a problem here, I haven't got enough tension. And when I started to look into it a bit more deeply, I found that um, 500 kilos is about a third of what we need. So I'm looking at about 1200 to 1500 kilos of force to uh, release the tool. But like I said, only for about half a millimetre or so, in fact, less than a half a millimetre. So. Um, uh, I moved away from this one and I'll just bring the next one in. This was my next uh, attempt and I thought I could just use a screw. So uh, I bought a threading insert for an Acme thread uh, because I needed uh, a standard trapezoidal, no that's not the right word, a standard 60 degree or 55 degree thread pitch would have too much resistance. The closer you can get to a square thread the better because your, resistant, your um, uh, resistance to turning reduces. So I made this, a left-handed thread, why I don't know. Um, now this would work, but the force required to turn the screw is quite significant. Uh, so much so that this 6mm plate actually bent. Uh, I've, I've reassembled it upside down, but uh, you might be able to see there's daylight underneath that plate. There you go, daylight through there. Uh, that was after I straightened it. So that was a non-starter. So uh, moving on, I'll show you what I tried next. Right, this was the next attempt. I thought um, if you if you look at a, um, a piston cylinder and conrod uh, assembly, when the piston is just before top dead centre or bottom dead centre, the amount of movement or rotation of the shaft has uh, you, you move the shaft along uh, quite a few degrees for a very small movement in the um, in the plane that the pistons moving up and down in that's one of the reasons why engines aren't very efficient um, and I thought yeah if you do, if you get the get the um, uh, positioning right you might have uh, sufficient mechanical advantage to make this something that would work using possibly uh, a small linear actuator like the, the first one I showed you. However, when I tried this out, the, this became pretty dangerous to be perfectly honest. The, the amount of force required to move it was quite significant. I should have put a, uh, a housing around the bearing because I just smashed the bearing. So, um, an interesting idea, dead duck. Moving on, this was where we finished with our last um, foray into power drawbars. Um, this is basically the guts out of the cheapest uh, impact screwdriver I could find. Um, I think this is about the $50 pounds mark, complete with a charger and two sets of batteries. Um, however, I had not paid enough attention to what I was doing. Firstly, this is a complicated thing to manufacture. Um, also, the 
you need to make the parts hardened. The, uh, the anvil on the top here is just being smashed to pieces and I've only run it three or four times. Um, what it is, is in the middle here is a cylinder with a, uh, I think it's a, an eight or 10 millimetre diameter piston that's going up and down. Uh, that is driven up and down by the sleeve which has uh, a square thread on it, again to keep the resistance as low as possible, uh, and it drives a piston at the bottom. So you get a, a small diameter to a large diameter piston. Uh, there's, a well, hey, there's a fly. Uh, there's a distinct mechanical advantage there. This doesn't have to move very far, but can generate significant force. Now, theoretically, if you do the calculations, this works. In practice, I'd forgotten one massive uh, thing about the case. The case holds it all together. So this, when you use it, just literally slides to pieces. So I would have to come up with a method, uh, there you go, a method to tie the motor to the, an, uh, to the hammer. And at that point I thought, we really, we, this is getting too complicated. Also, I don't have enough real estate with the head of my mill at the top of its travel. Even if I cut this down to the, the minimum length, it would still be buried in the ceiling by a couple of inches. That's not a good, uh, a good situation. So I've moved on from this. It does work. Right, here we go. So after over a year's worth of fiddling around and, uh, and failing dismally, I've um, I started to think there's got to be a way to do this that's cheap um, that, and reliable. And I, and I think I may have possibly come up with a reasonable solution, but we'll see. Um, I think in the hobby game, we are not too obsessed with how fast things move. So um, if it takes 10-15 seconds to, for a tool to pop out uh, and a new one to pop in. It's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, if you're churning out parts by the million and you, you like uh, Titan at Titan's a CNC, every second counts. You've got salaries to pay and profits to make. But for home machinists, is that really the end of the world? I don't think so. So, um, so I've come up with a new option and, uh, and we'll see how this goes. I haven't finished it yet, but uh, um, it's led me to this. Now this is another linear actuator, but this one is considerably more powerful. This one is 6,000 newtons, 600 kilos. That's, yeah, it's got plastic bits in it, so I'm not entirely sure that 600 kilos is right, but we'll see. Um, and it's in a simple frame driving a uh, a piston in a cylinder and I looked at getting these a uh, piston and cylinder as cheap as possible and I came up with a oops, with a stock hit the ground uh, I came up with what I think is the cheapest solution the piston and cylinder on this bit of kit is from hydraulic bottle jack it's a two-ton bottle jack that's the guts out of it um, it's 25 mil diameter and it basically just pumps oil. So as the piston comes down, it pumps oil out. I've changed the seal arrangement in here because you need to, otherwise it'll jam. So let me, um, let me just give you a close up and then we'll talk through what I've done. Here we go. Uh, this is a, a, a piston that goes up and down. Uh, I'll show you that in a moment. And uh, it basically just pumps hydraulic oil out of this port. And um, you just connect this port via a, um, hydraulic hose to a cylinder that sits on top of the the mill so uh, I'm reusing parts that I've made before so uh, this is the clamp plate this is the cylinder that's going to sit on top and when you do the calculations uh, this arrangement gives us about three and a half or four or so uh, times the force available here. So we go from 6,000 uh, newtons all the way up to 
about three and a half tons in theory. Now in practice, you're probably not gonna get as high as that. And um, it's very easy to electrically limit the available power, um, possibly with an Arduino uh, in the future. Anyway, I'll think about that. The, um, the real advantage here is that the mass that's on the top of the mill has been reduced dramatically. Um, effectively what I've done, rather than try and squash everything into the available space on top of the mill, I've created a hydraulic power pack that just sits on the bench behind, out of the way, it's going to be relatively safe, nobody's going to get too near it. If I build a proper enclosure for the mill, you build it into the bottom of the uh, bottom of the enclosure, so it's just completely and utterly out of the way. Um, theoretically, this should do the job. It's going to take it a while to actually change a tool because uh, I think we're talking about what are we talking about? Twenty odd seconds or so for this to go from one end to the other. So um, let me just whip a battery onto that, and we'll watch it move. It's not going to set any speed records. But does that matter? As I said, I really don't think they go. Uh, what I have done is this. There are limit switches inside the case here. And uh, what I've done is I've re-engineered those to give me. Uh, it, it comes with 100 millimeters of movement, four inches. And I've reduced it down to 65, which is about an inch, uh, two and a half inches. So um, two and a half inches or so is sufficient. Uh, to push this cylinder all the way in and pull it out far enough that, that um, it, it, the piston will never come clear of the top. Um, also, there are a couple of um, uh, holes in the side of this cylinder so that when you hit the top of the travel on your bottle jack, it doesn't push the cylinder or the piston all the way out the top, so it bleeds the, bleeds the fluid off. Um, so there we go. That's, um, that's where we are at the moment. Here we are. Whoop. Right, I know what you're going to say. This is all expensive. Well, this was the most expensive bit, the uh, linear actuator. I think it was about the $65 pounds mark. The trolley jack, it's not the trolley jack, the bottle jack was about 10 or 12 dollar pounds. Um, the hydraulic cylinder, if you watched my video on where to get um, cheap metal, this came out of a dumpster basically uh, from a, a local hydraulic company. Uh, cost me a tenner along with as much metal as I'm going to need to um, uh, precision EN1A steel as I'm going to need for the next few years. Um, and uh, the piston oh, came with enough material to make a piston out of. Um, this was expensive. I've had to buy a proper uh, UN seal, U-cup seal, for the piston. Um, and we'll see whether or not it works. The only thing left to do is to make the piston to fit in here and then do all of the required bits to fit it to the mill to give me the right um, clearances and spacings that I need. So uh, we're nearly there. Yeah, I, uh, I haven't posted a video for the last two or three weeks because I've been working on this beast. Uh, it, took, it has taken a lot longer to get this far than I thought it would do. Um, I am drawing it up in CAD as I go, so if it works, this will be a download. Um, so that people can make their own. All told, it's got to be the cheapest solution out there. If anybody can figure out a way of doing it any cheaper than this, I'm all ears. Um, oh, excuse me. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I know this hasn't been the most exciting video. There's no machining in it whatsoever. It's just me yapping on. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Do hit the subscribe spanner and the bell if, uh, if you like this sort of stuff and you're interested in how we go about doing this. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Hopefully, if all goes to plan, when this is finished and we try it out. So um, I may have a leak in here. I think I've got a leak coming up, but um, we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay safe and see you next time.